The sixth generation Ford Mustang, coded S550, was the first world market Mustang to go on sale, with both left and right hand drive offered from the 2015 production year. It debuted on December 5th, 2013 across the world, with events in Michigan, Los Angeles and New York for the USA, but also Barcelona, Shanghai and Sydney. Assembly began in July 2014 and will cease in 2023 upon the introduction of the 7th generation Mustang, which will once again be sold as a world market vehicle. Several aspects of the S550 Mustang were new and a steady departure from previous generations, however it also made nods to its heritage. Independent rear suspension was introduced, although this wasn't the first time that Mustang came with it, that honour goes to the 1999 Mustang SVT Cobra. But sequential rear indicators inspired by the inception of the Mustang 50 years before stopped the S550 straying too far from its heritage, long ahead of the modern zip style dynamic indicators that many other brands now utilise. The Mustang received several changes both major and minor throughout its production years. Cup holder relocation after the first production year and Sync 2 infotainment upgrades in model year 2016 were early changes. The Sync 3 infotainment would also become optionally available. The V6 engine was dropped after 2017 as buyers were convinced that it no longer had a place in the lineup with the four cylinder EcoBoost motor outperforming it. 2017 also introduced Android Auto and Apple CarPlay for the infotainment. Analog gauges disappeared from the Mustang as part of the 2018 refresh, swapped for a digital display. The refresh added several exterior changes including quad tip exhaust, front end redesign and the introduction of a 10 speed automatic gearbox. Optional items were added including heated and cooled seats, a heated steering wheel and Magna Ride adjustable suspension which was previously limited to the GT350 models. It should be noted that the GT350 did not receive several of the updates including the exterior changes. V8 buyers would see the Coyote motor go through three generations in the S550 Mustang. 2021 added the Mark 1 model, replacing the Bullet model. Aside from the regular Mustang there is also the GT350, GT350R and the GT500. Interestingly, although this Mustang was the first to be offered to the world, the sales numbers for the 6th generation Mustang were not as strong as you may expect. A single model year to the original back in the 60s had a highlight production rate of 600,000 a year. 2016 was the strongest global sales year for the S550 and it moved 135,000 units. But to be fair to the S550, competition has increased and overall interest in sports cars has reduced as SUVs continue to dominate global sales charts, meaning that despite its lower sales figures, compared to previous generations, the S550 Mustang is still a very popular choice in today's market. The S550 was offered with four different displacements and five engine codes. An interesting side point for Mustang enthusiasts is that while the Coyote 5 litre V8 Cyclone 3.7 litre V6 and Voodoo and Predator 5.2 litre engines are familiar engine names, the 2.3 litre EcoBoost is rarely named. The motor is called Valencia by Ford, named after the production facility in Spain where it is built. Another small golden nugget of Mustang trivia is that the 5.2 litre Voodoo engine was the first American factory built flat plane crank V8 in a mass production vehicle. We'll come on to the motors and what to look for on each one later in the video, but first up we'll focus on the recalls and known faults to look out for, no matter whether you're looking for a V6 convertible in rental car specification or a well kept Shelby. First off we will stress that due to the Mustang's global release, there may be some nuanced differences between North American, European, Australian and other world market cars, and so if we miss something that you feel is applicable to Mustangs sold in your country, please add them in the comments below. An example of this is that due to local laws, not all Mustangs around the world have sequential rear indicators. First up there are recalls across several model years, and so although only a couple of these are likely to have been needed for any car you view, it is worth checking to make sure they have actually been done. We will summarise all recalls for less than 1000 production units now. These are 2015 model year recalls for safety belt tensioners, fuel pressure sensor leakage and rear caliper guide pins. 2016 model year for passenger airbag, 2018 model year for missing roll pin, aftermarket Roush supercharger barb fittings and 2020 model years for front camera calibration. 
Moving on to the larger recalls and first up is the 2015 recall for cars manufactured until February 10th 2015 with a 2.3 litre EcoBoost engine. 19,095 vehicles were recalled for degradation of fuel vapour lines. Thermal wraps were added to resolve the issue. In September 2016, a recall for door latches and locks was announced affecting over 2 million Ford vehicles. Some 2015 model year Mustangs in a variety of engine and trim levels were affected. This led to another service bulletin and recall in June 2020 for doors opening while driving, again affecting 2015 model year Mustangs. Note that an additional recall in 2017 was also announced. Mustangs built between February 2015 and August 2016 for model years 2015 to 2017 had a recall of 6,582 units for an oil leak from the engine cooler hose. The oil cooler tube was replaced to resolve the issue with initial complaints from owners varying from minor oil leaks to failed engines. 1,900 units built in September 2015 and October 2015 for model year 2016 were recalled for potential damage caused by seat tethers in shipping. This can result in improper restraint for child seats and adult passengers. In February 2019, Ford announced a recall of 4,212 vehicles, including the Mustang, for a failure of the digital instrument cluster resulting in a blank screen. Dealers would reprogram the screen as a resolution. 2020 Mustangs were recalled due to a brake pedal bracket that risks fracturing when used in emergency stopping. The assembly on affected vehicles was replaced free of charge. Finally, in September 2020, Ford recalled a large number of its vehicles for an inoperative rear view camera. 2020 model year Mustangs were part of this larger recall. If we have missed a recall in your country, please add it below. Next up are the known faults or problem areas to look out for across the Mustang range. On any potential purchase, check around the door and beneath the rear windows for any sign of water ingress. Also make sure the ventilation system works and moves around the range of temperatures and speeds without sticking. Some owners have reported the heater getting stuck in the high position. Air conditioning compressors are a somewhat common failure point and so if a previous owner has had this replaced, take it as a positive buying sign. If looking for a 2.3 litre EcoBoost model, then inspect around the head gasket. Some early engines were supplied with the wrong size gasket, although almost all of these have now been refitted with correct fitment items. Also be aware of maintenance skips. The Mustang is a fairly reliable vehicle, but it demands good maintenance, especially on high performance models. Owners that have maintained their vehicle at home should be asked to provide receipts for parts so you can check that the schedule has been adhered to. We'll add that there is a lively debate among Mustang owners about which years are good and bad. In our research we found a mild amount of issues among all model years. This isn't to say there are not badly built examples on the market and we hope our guide helps you avoid them, but we should stress that there is a lot of internet debate about certain model years. Overall as these cars age, the complaints and advice of one year over another appears to be smoothing out and the more general advice of to buy the best example you can afford is becoming more applicable. Next up is the engines and a reminder that if you're enjoying our guide to subscribe to the channel, you never know what car you might want next and so why not subscribe today. First up we'll cover the Cyclone 3.7 litre V6 engine as it was only sold until 2017 and produces 300 brake horsepower. The engine has featured in a variety of Ford vehicles and is generally considered a robust unit. Three areas to look out for are water pump failures, although these are more widely reported on earlier versions of the motor before it was fitted to the S550 Mustang. Cam phases are a reported issue with higher mileage cars and ignition coil failures, the final common fault. The four cylinder 2.3 litre Valencia EcoBoost engine produces 310 brake horsepower in the USA and 313 brake horsepower in international markets until 2017 and 286 brake horsepower after this date to meet international emissions laws. It can also be found with 330 brake horsepower if fitted with the high performance package available from 2019. These engines are shared with the Ford Focus RS and early production was mired by head gasket failures. There was also an ongoing issue of engines running hot, recalls to fit heat shields and correct the improper fitment of the head gaskets has resolved the majority of these issues, however complaints on newer models continue and so make sure to take a car for an extended test drive and visually inspect around the head after a drive. On to the popular choice of many Mustang buyers, the 5 litre Coyote V8. 
producing 435 brake horsepower until 2017, when power increases to 460 brake horsepower, and late models sold in 2022 have this figure officially reduced to 450 brake horsepower. For international markets, the power differs slightly, with 415 brake horsepower until 2017, and then 444 brake horsepower thereafter. Bullet models get 480 brake horsepower in their domestic market and 470 brake horsepower on international models, and the Mark I matches these figures. Official fuel figures range across the years of markets, but 19.3 miles per gallon using US measurements or 11.8 litres per 100 kilometres in metric are a good rough estimate to go by. The reduction of 10 brake horsepower in late GT models is due to California low emission requirements. International markets were unaffected due to earlier emissions requirements already being met. As to what to look for, the internet is awash with information of both positive and negative experiences with the 5 litre V8. We'll start with one of the trickier problems, referred to as engine tick, sometimes called barbecue tick or typewriter tick. Ford created a service bulletin for the issue, but later said it was a characteristic of the engine. Some owners believe this is due to a light piston slap, and with some having their motor replaced by Ford due to ball scoring, this is a possible culprit. The other is the direct injection system. Owners of Volkswagens will be familiar with the noise. The jury is out on this issue. If you find an example without the ticking noise, then you shouldn't worry. If you find a perfect use example that has the tick, then you'll have to balance in your own mind the fact that thousands of these motors operate across the Ford lineup and have covered over 150,000 miles without issue. Also, note that the ticking noise is reported to be more prominent on all 5 litre engines after 2018. Some owners have reported the engine not starting despite a good battery. The first area to check is the relay for the ECM. This part is cheap and has resolved the issue for some owners. If the throttle body is clogged or excessively dirty, the 5 litre engine can stall while driving. Check the throttle body first if you experience this issue. A faulty fuel pressure sensor is likely the culprit if you experience engine surging and should be the first area to check. Our final area to look out is not the motor itself but the transmission. Reports of problems vary widely with some owners taking particular issue with the 10 speed automatic. On a test drive in any 5 litre model, make sure the gear shift is direct without hesitation on automatics. If in a manual, feel for any slack in the gearbox when shifting at a higher RPM. Overall the 5 litre is considered a reliable engine and many have supercharged the motor for more power without issue. In all our guides we are looking for problems to advise our viewers what to look for so we should stress that the majority of owners consider the Coyote motor dependable. Next up is the 5.2 litre Voodoo motor featuring a flat plane crank and producing 526 brake horsepower in the GT350 and GT350R model. These motors needed to be viewed through the lens of high performance when it comes to reliability and so overall two areas of most concern are overheating and oil consumption. Ask an owner if they've experienced either of these issues and if possible take a test drive on a warm day. Ford recalled the 5.2 litre Voodoo motor in 2021 for a timing chain tensioner so check any used model produced between 2019 to 2021 to see if it was affected and recall work performed. Note a class action lawsuit was started by owners of the GT350 in 2022 that believe the cars could not achieve the performance Ford had claimed while on track due to a design issue pertaining to the lack of intercoolers that the GT350R has. Finally, there is the 5.2 litre Predator engine that uses the cross plane crank and produces 760 brake horsepower. Again, we should note that these are low volume motors and so finding common areas of concern can be difficult. These are almost all still under manufacturer warranty at the time of this guide's production as the model was released in 2020. Due to this, the only notes we have are that some owners reported issues with spark plugs and fuel injectors. Ford also recalled the motor for improper installation of the secondary timing chain tensioner and so check to see if the vehicle was affected and had the recall work carried out. For our picks on the lower budget we would either look for a well-kept EcoBoost model or a manual 2017 5 litre V8 and if shopping at the higher end budget a Bullet or Mark 1 model is sure to give thrills without needing a racetrack to experience them. And before we go a final bit of Mustang trivia for sticking around to the end, the engine start stop button flashes 30 times a minute to replicate the resting heart rate of a Mustang horse. As ever, all the best with your car search and consider checking out our other videos for more guides and car reviews.